Today, we're going to look at the components of number sense in pre-K to second grade in our quest to build our math minds so we can build the math minds of our students. Now, I am going to get straight to it, and I'm going to hop right over into my screen so that we can take a look at the eight components of number sense in pre-K to second grade. Okay, well, we are going to start off with the concepts of early numeracy. These come from the work of Clements and Sarama, and the first one is this idea of subitizing. It's the ability to instantly recognize how many. So uh, I'm going to go through each one of them, and then I'm going to use the picture here to give a little bit more description. Verbal counting is the next one, and that's when kids are able to just say the number names in order. Um, a lot of times uh, kids start out with like a sing song. It's just like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They don't really realize that they're individual amounts. They aren't paying attention to patterns, all that kind of stuff. So verbal counting is being able to say the numbers in order. Object counting is when the kids actually attach those words to things. This is when they start to realize that you're counting for a purpose. And then the final one in early numeracy is this idea of cardinality, that when you're counting out an amount, the last amount you say, the last number you say, tells you how many you have. All right, so this little girl here with her fingers and her apples here, let's take a look at each of these four things. Kids who are able to subitize can look at this picture, and if we were to ask them, how many apples does she have there? A lot of the kids might not be able to subitize it. And subitizing, again, is just instantly recognizing without having to count. However, they might be able to answer the question, how many fingers does she have up? And they would instantly be able to tell that one. Subitizing is helpful, it's easier, I should say, to subitize if you can see nice groupings. So a lot of kids will recognize that she has six fingers up because they know five and the one, right? And with the apples, if we ask them that, this is where kids might count, okay? So verbal counting is when kids are just counting, but you can tell if they have object counting when you ask those questions like, how many apples does she have? And you see a kid go one, two, three, four, five, six. You'll also see kids who will double count things, they'll skip over apples, all of that happens in this phase of developing their object counting. So object counting is just being able to attach the name to the object. Now cardinality comes into play when you ask that question, how many apples do you have? So if you ask that question, how many apples do you have? And the kid goes one, two, three, four, five, six. And that's all they do. And they say, so how many apples do you have? And they go, one, two, three, four, five, six. They don't get that when they're done counting, that tells them how many they had. That's a set. So these four early numeracy concepts play, go hand in hand. They help develop each other. Right? It's not like you just work on subitizing, then you do verbal counting, then you do object counting. They all work together, together to build this comprehensive idea of early numeracy. Now those four lay a foundation for helping kids be able to pay attention to number sense relationships. So these four I discovered in the book, we, a lot of people call it the Van de Waal book, but it's Teaching Student-Centered Mathematics. And in there, there's a small little part about the relationships that kids need to develop around numbers. And once I read these, I'm like, these are the things that so many kids are missing. There's spatial relationships, one, two, more, and less, benchmarks of five and 10, and part, part, whole. Now, I consider these four being like the net of understanding. That's why I've got the hammock there. I see them as a web of connectedness that holds together the mathematical understandings that our students have. And if something gets missing, like if some part of that web gets broken, it's okay because there's lots of other connections in there that keeps their understanding secure, just like in a hammock. So let's take a look at each one of those fairly quickly. So the first one, spatial relationships, is having a visual of 
a numeral that goes along with a numeral and using those visuals to help them see relationships. So in the early grades, if all I had up there was just the digit three and four, it's hard to talk about which one is more, which one's less, how many more, how many less. But when kids have these visuals, the spatial image can come up and then we can have much more deeper conversations about how these quantities relate to each other. So building relationships starts first with having lots of visual spatial images of these quantities so that we can use those to help us build the other relationships that we're going to talk about. So the next one of one, two, more, or less is instantly knowing what is one and two, more, and less of any amount. But again, having a visual picture helps with that. If I just had six and seven on the screen and ask, or if let's just say I just had six and I asked them what's one more than that, it's harder for some kids to be able to do that. But if we have a visual of the wreck and wreck showing six on the top there, and then we show, and then we ask them what's one more, the visual that might come up for them is that visual of seven that's down below it. So those spatial relationships help lay a foundation for us to be able to build this relationship of one and two more and less. And it doesn't just stop with one and two more or less. As you start getting into multi-digit numbers, it becomes one ten and two tens more. So 10, 20 more or less. What's 100 or 200 more and less. So this idea of the one, two more or less, it's not just one or two, it's one or two of those benchmark amounts more or less. Speaking of the benchmarks, the third relationship is the benchmarks of five and 10. In the early grades, it is so important that kids understand the bench, how numbers relate to the benchmark of 10. However, they first need to be very solid with how numbers relate to the benchmark of five. It's two, our number system is built around the base 10 number system, but two fives make a 10. So when kids are first starting out with numbers like three, we don't want to push them to see relationships to 10. We want to start out with how does it relate to five first? And then as we work into bigger amounts like nine, we can help them see how it relates to both five and 10. Now, kids don't see this if they just have random uh, manipulatives that they're working with. If we take those manipulatives and just put them into a 10 frame, it makes a world of difference and kids can start to then have the opportunity to see how numbers relate to those benchmarks of five and 10. The last number sense concept is this idea of understanding part, part, whole. We're very familiar with this because textbooks tend to do a lot of activities around this. You take a whole amount and you break it up into all of the parts, right? And I like to relate this a little bit to doing prime factorization. Do you guys remember having to do prime factorization in school? Like I was good at prime factorization. When I was teaching middle school, I had my kids do prime factorization, but I never knew why. Why are we doing prime factorization? What does it help me with? So even with this, this part, part, whole idea is like, prime factorization for our older kids. Like they can do it, but they don't know why they're doing it. What's the point in knowing all the ways that you can break apart seven? Yeah, kids learn what makes seven, but what is really the point? Why would I ever break a seven into a one and a six versus a two and a five? That is so important. Kids need to have that understanding about why we need to break numbers apart. It helps us as we move into addition and subtraction to make problems friendlier. That's one of the biggest pieces. Well, that's a much deeper concept than I can do in just one video. And that's why I have full courses on how to develop number sense for kids. But for right now, I want you to consider this quote by Howden. She says, it develops gradually as a result of exploring numbers, visualizing them in a variety of contexts and relating them in ways that are not limited by traditional algorithms. I say it all the time. Number sense can't be taught. It's caught. I can't directly teach a kid how six relates to seven. They need to explore those numbers. They need to visualize. They need to build it. They need to build these relationships in their own way. So as that last slide reminded us, 
It does not happen through a worksheet. It happens through experiences, through seeing patterns, visualizing things. And I hope that this video has given you a little bit of insight so that you can get back there and build the math minds of your students. Have a great day.